You're watching Morning at NTV. Hi there, good morning. Welcome back to Morning at NTV. My name is Malaki Vilodera. Now, the 2018 NTV Economic Summit is scheduled to take place today in the evening. So be sure to look out for that because we'll be streaming live. So don't miss out on this one. So let's preempt the conversation that will be taking place today evening. And so in studios to talk about the Economic Summit and what the focus will be this year is Madam Hadija Nyomo. The executive director of tax at Ernst & Young here in the country. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Next to her is Mr. Godi Quizera. He's the executive director of the Albertine Grabel Oil and Gas Districts Association here in the country. Welcome to the show. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So I think let's just, we were having this conversation on oil just before we went mm. on air. And I think let's start with that, especially with you, Mr. Godi, being at the center of it in the mm. Albertine region where our oil is coming from. Let's talk about that. How is the process so far? Because you are on ground. Break it down for us. Well, first of all, let me again first introduce myself. Yes. Godi is my name. And I work from Agoda Secretariat as the Executive Director, but also come from Rukunjiri local government where I serve as the district planner. Now, that does not mean to say that I have the double mandate, but at Agoda is an extension of services directly seconded by those districts at the regional level. Mm -hmm. Now, we stand to advocate for increased benefit and also reduced risks associated with oil and gas to advocate for utilization of local skills and also mainstream oil and gas in our member district development plans. Now, we started this association and registered this as a, a corporate uh, company uh, with limited guarantee of shares to do business first of all, but the business that we are doing is to make sure that we do not work for profit. Mm. Orient our people, mobilize them to tap into the benefits of oil and gas. And you have to note that in the recent, uh, we shall be having an investment, a huge investment of around 20 US billion directly invested into the production phase of the oil and gas mm -hmm. industry. Now, that is a very, very huge advantage that we believe will turn around the economy of Uganda and also the people of the Albertine Graben to take advantage and also that will prepare us into the middle income as status as per the aspiration of the National Development Plan too. So those, <coughs> uh, they will come with the business, jobs, opportunities, which I estimated that he, Six to thousand, those are direct jobs. But also, we also believe that there are other many induced opportunities. The businesses, which are also going to come along the okay. industry, and we believe we must prepare our people to benefit and tap into that advantage. Just paint a picture for us. Um, of course, I know you are there, but what we saw in the dailies just a few days ago is that we have a gap for mm. the jobs that are going to be available with the oil production yes. in Albertine. Mm. And um, what the president was saying is that the gap is of 6,204 yes. workers. And that's why he actually went around issuing bursaries for that. Mm. So are the people in this particular region warming up to that? Are they ready to take up this particular jobs and actually be ready to be skilled? Because yesterday we were having this conversation and the issue that was there is that the people don't want these jobs. They actually... <laughs> don't want to be skilled. So is that the same situation on ground? No, I think yes and no, because maybe from the perspective when you look around, there has not been adequate mobilization and preparation of these people to tap into uh, those opportunities. But I want to note that Agoda is doing its best, working with other uh, central government players and also the joint venture companies mm -hmm. to ensure that first of all we induce we mobilize the communities to tap into those those jobs okay. but what we lack is the mobilization 
and the skills. The certification, the standards, all of them have remained white elephants. They have not been broken down for the community and the people that are affected to appreciate and take advantage of. So that's the problem and it's a gap. All right. Uh, Madam Hadija, let's get into it. Before we move out of oil, you are the executive director of um, you know, tax in Ernst & Young. And we were having this conversation. How do we ensure that the value from this oil production actually trickles down to our economy and the citizenry? Just break that, uh, that down for us, especially when it comes to the front of taxation. Help us understand that. Um, thank you. Uh, like you've said, I'm Hadija. Um, for me, when I look at oil, it's, um, I, I feel like the stakeholders are many. But I will now drill down to that ordinary person. Mm -hmm. That person who is in uh, the Albertine region. That person whose land probably could have been affected. Mm -hmm. That person who has lived on that village for so long and has known other activities like uh, agriculture, like uh, maybe there's a school of farming and so on. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I feel like when we talk about oil, and then we go into taxation. Of course, we, 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 we believe that the fact that it's going to hinge on productivity, we expect oil production to contribute to the country's taxation, to the country's mm -hmm. revenue mm -hmm. overall. And of course, what are we looking at in terms of revenue? We are looking at self-reliance. If the oil is produced, the workers are taxed from an employment income perspective, income tax from the oil producers, 